Hello? Hi, this is David O'Dell with O'Dell Complete Concrete. We're going to be uh, replacing this patio in this house. There's a raised planter in the um, corner there. We're going to be taking that down as well. They've got some concrete tiles. It kind of looks like a Spanish tile, but actually this is um, concrete tiles that were set on top of a concrete slab. And you can see the concrete cracked underneath, and then that reflected right through the tiles. The trees on the other side of this property line wall here, we found that the roots from the trees um, on the outside of uh, this property line block wall came underneath that wall and actually um, is what did the damage to this patio. We, we ran into a lot of roots, in other words, that were uh, coming from the other side of the wall. This concrete came out really easy, um, which is nice because I just used my uh, little electric jackhammer here and since there was no fiber mesh, no rebar reinforcement in it, it uh, broke out real easy. Now if this had some rebar in it like what I put in it or some fiber or the combination of both, this would have took me twice as long to get out for sure. So you can see this patio cover, um, they wanted to leave those posts in. Um, so what we did is we chipped around the footings and we're going to end up pouring over them. They put some sand base under this um, patio as you can see someone put some sand base under it which made it really nice for the roots um, to get under there it looks to me like because they sat right in that sand bed probably um, where the water was being captured and that's where the roots go so I found another there must have been a previous raised planter bed in this location because I ran into the footing and you can see the black stuff on the wall that was um, that uh, Henry's I believe 107 or 207 Henry's waterproofing it's like a tar that you can uh, slap on the walls and waterproof them it's probably the least expensive way to do a waterproofing there's some other systems that are better but they're more expensive so it's commonly used for many reasons easy affordability things of that nature Anyway, I had to take that footing out from that raised planter bed. It was a pretty good one. It was a good 10 inches thick by 12 inches wide. Had no rebar in it, fortunately. So that would have made it more difficult to get out. Right now we're doing a, we're establishing the grade here on this patio. So in a normal situation, um, these weep screets, which is this, this is known as your weep screet, allows the water to run out the bottom of the stucco. There's holes under here. If any water gets into the stucco or behind the stucco, it can come out rather than going into the house. So you always have to be below that. So what I'm going to do to get slope out of here, we've got 32 feet. Ideally, an eighth inch per foot would be nice, which would give me four inches of slope in this distance. But I'm not going to quite get that. I'm going to get about three inches, three and a half. So, and what we do is it's pretty simple. I'm just going to measure down three and a half inches here, and I'm going to mark it. So this is going to be the top of the concrete on the low end and over here at the high end, high side we just go to we follow that we look at that wheat screen make sure that it's level and it looks like it is so at this point we're going to go a half inch below so we're going to be right here 
So that gives me three inches of slope, assuming that the weep screed is level. Gives me three inches of slope from the back to the front and 32 feet. So it's less than eight per foot. Hopefully that's enough. And now we're gonna check the cross slope here. I'm gonna probably just go level across and out because inevitably we want the water to go through the front gate. So it's gotta go to the lawn and then it's gotta go out. So I'll check the cross slope now with the board, see what happens. So we're gonna um, set a form at the back. See that wood fence in the back there? I'm gonna set a form in about uh, four inches just in case they have to replace that fence in the future. They can without having to uh, break any concrete out you know the footings on those posts are pretty good size and then you'll need to dig new ones in eventually so we need a little space back there so we're gonna go wall-to-wall -wall concrete here and I'm going to slope away from the house I'm gonna slope it towards the block wall and then I'm gonna have my slope going out of this area into the lawn So I'm coming right up underneath the weep screed at that point. And as soon as I start going out, it'll get lower and lower on the weep screed as I go. So I'm going to get some marks on both ends of the job and I'm just doing a straight slope. So it won't have any break points or changes of elevation. It'll just be a straight grade slope from the back to the front. So now I have my two marks. I've got approximately three inches of slope. Now I'll just snap a line. I'm, I use a red chalk line here because those uh, seem to stay on the walls the best. Even with water, they stay on uh, much better than, say, uh, the blues or the purples. now what we're doing here since we have a chalk line on both sides we can use those as a reference to um, drag this 2 by 4 across just to get the right grade the right depth of concrete and a nice smooth surface to pour on we chopped all the roots out of here uh, we regraded it all got all the uh, debris out of here a lot of these roots um, and leaves and what have you will decompose under the concrete and leave you some hollows at some point but if you don't if you don't have a lot of that kind of stuff going on in there it'll bridge it real easy the concrete will bridge some small defects in your grade especially with um, when you have the rebar and fiber mesh in there you're actually uh, building a bridge that can be suspended at some point We ran the plate compactor through here and then what we what I always do before a pour is at least 12 to 24 hours before I'll uh, saturate I'll put a good inch of water on the top of this and just let it soak in real thoroughly and then I know that's going to settle it in and uh, it's going to be a lot better surface to pour on. I'm putting some expansion cardboard. I believe it's just some recycled uh, paper they pressed into this expansion paper. And that's what I'm using here. Um, they have that at Lowe's. They don't have that at Home Depot, but uh, they carry the foam at Home Depot and they carry this paper stuff at Lowe's. So one is more rigid. The foam is nice. You know, if you've got some irregular surfaces, um, if you got a nice flat surface, this stuff is good too. So either one uh, works just as well. Just depends what kind of surfaces surface you're going to mount it on. 
So you could put this expansion paper on both sides if you'd like. I just put it on one side typically because that'll that's enough. Here's the day of the pour. I have a, a, an extra concrete finisher I brought in here. We've already primed the hose and blown the water out. What I like to do is run uh, about a two foot uh, bead along both sides and then I'll uh, we'll call it wet screeding the uh, concrete out from the edges of the house and the wall that gives me a good straight surface and a guide to start rotting in this direction now since we're kind of in an area where we can't get into the back again we have to um, lay it down on the way out either that or we have to use a lot of poles to get it all at once and it'll hit that other block wall behind it so we're gonna do pour half bowl float it pour the other half and bowl float that so on one side we just go to the chalk line the other side we're going right to that expansion paper that's a three and a half foot magnesium bowl float in areas where you can't work it too much and you, you you can't get a lot of walking tools in there the magnesium floats great because you can kind of uh, seal it up on the way out so you end up having a better surface when you actually have to go back there on your knee boards to work the concrete if you use the wood both would be pretty open when you got back there when it was hard enough on your knee boards it'd be a little more difficult to rub out In this particular job, uh, since it's not that large, I've decided to uh, wet cut my tool joints in. And this is big blue right here that I'm running. And since I have a rocker on this, I was able to go the whole distance. And I tilted the rocker so I actually went up and over the block wall behind me. So that laid it down real nice and flat. So when we went out here with the boards, uh, makes it much quicker and easier So here's the strain line. We're gonna snap a line down the middle and that's my guide to start cutting my joints in I'm gonna have one down the middle and then I'm gonna have two in the other direction Here's the cutter that I'm using here It goes two and a half inches deep and this particular one I'm using is four foot long so it, it runs real straight and true because of the length of it. And this one, this particular cutter has been modified a little bit. Um, the finisher here, it's actually his tool that he brought. And uh, I was checking it out. I was checking it out and he put a little crown in that thing. Because a lot of time they're, they're built straight. Straight as an arrow in both directions. So they dig in, have a tendency to dig in. This one had a little arch to it. He kind of tweaked it a little bit, and I noticed it was it worked out real nice because it didn't dig in on the uh, front nose or in the rear when I pulled it back. So I was real happy with that little modification. Now I can't get my... Uh, cutter in going on those other two joints so I'm just going to have to go out there on some knee boards or sliders and I'm going to use a 2 by 4 for a straight edge and then I'm going to wet cut it with my uh, 3 quarter deep half inch radius hand joiner and that's what I'll use to go through all these joints and then uh, on my final pass I'm going to actually decrease my depth of my hand joiner I'm going to go to a half inch deep half inch radius what that does is uh, it just makes it easier to run on your final pass because your concrete's really hard at that point on your on your last pass. What you do is you just trowel over your lines just a little bit so a little bit of the cream falls into those cracks. And then you just kind of go through with the half deep. All the rocks are way out of the way because you've already hit it with a two and a half cutter and then you followed it with a three quarter deep. Now you can drop a half in there without any problems of rocks getting in the way. So you can go through it pretty quickly.
and the joint still does the same thing because you've already broken the aggregate with the deep cutter so I mean you could actually technically close this joint up if you wanted to with the trowel totally close it and it will still crack on a perfectly straight line because the aggregate has been separated a lot of people have tried to close up joints you know in the past and I've seen it done they'll say well you know what I don't like where that joint is right now I'm gonna go ahead and close it and move it but guess what it cracked on the one that they closed because the aggregates already been separated they can be closed you know but um, it's a real art to close them. you got to get aggregate in there and pound it together otherwise uh, it just cracks on that line anyway now here's my last pass and uh, i'm just going to stand up on my fiberglass sliders i'm going to um, lock in my feet kind of like a snowboard i've actually used these for walking in the snow since i didn't have any um snowshoes and i was in the snow one time and i had my sliders in my truck and i said you know what i'm gonna use these to walk around this soft snow it actually worked pretty nicely a little bit slippery It'd be nice to have, drill some holes in them it worked better but it ended up working pretty good Anyway, I got some new shirts coming in, hats, pins, and gloves. They're going to all have my logo on it. And uh, if anybody wants to buy any, you can check them out and uh, purchase them. I'm going to set up a little uh, uh, account where you can buy them, right? a link. I'm going to set up a link through Amazon. You can buy some of my gear if you want some. Um, gloves. I got some uh, stylus pins and uh, shirts and hats all have the logo on there and I did a little modification to the logo nothing major but I threw a little uh, like leprechaun character in there thanks for watching my videos if you like them don't forget to subscribe I got a lot more tips where these ones came from they're almost endless